So I hope you all like the break and you'll all rejuvenated back for another couple of talks before lunch. Do you all remember what I had said in the start? When I say go, go. Hey, you got it right. This is like how you say, you know, Bharat Mata Ki Jai. All right. So, our uh, next speaker, Hannah, she comes from New York. She has a PhD, so don't mess with her, right? <laughs> she works in Google, and uh, she used to work in C++, and learned Go accidentally. It's a good mistake to make, a really good mistake to make, because she finds Go easy to learn. And she's been on the Go team, and uh, mostly works on Go Mobile. Uh, a decade ago when she was uh, dating her boyfriend, they actually exchanged notes, correspondence, in Python and Perl. And she's finally married to Go. And she gave me an excellent tip for all those who are travelers and fly frequently. How do you get an easy upgrade from economy to first class? Just take some of the hot water, drain it out, put some cold water, and like, ah, I got burnt! And you get an upgrade to first class. That was not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, that's how you it. do it. All right, Hannah, stage is all yours. OK, thank you, Gautam. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And I'm really glad to have an opportunity to speak in GoProcon India. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't know how many times I will do this. <coughs> OK. So I will, today I will talk about how to use Go to write your library for mobile app. So since uh, Go 1.4 to release uh, a little bit a year ago, Go started to include uh, experimental mobile platform support. Uh, so you can write Go program for Android and iOS. And also we have a mobile sub-repository under golang.org that includes cross-platform packages and build tools for using Go on mobile platform. So today I will talk about like, uh, how to use this tool to achieve your goal. Okay, before going into the detail, first uh, I want to warn you, <laughs> the project is still experimental and while we are working hard to improve it, neither Google nor the Go team can provide end user support. Okay, let's go back to the main topic. Currently, there are two ways of using Go to write a mobile app. The first one is native apps, where you write the entire app in Go. It's cool, right? Yeah. And there are packages uh, uh, for graphics, event handling, audio, and sensor. You can use these packages to write uh, these native apps. And another, uh, uh, another strategy to write a mobile app using Go is to write Android UI in Java or iOS UI in Objective-C or Swift or whatever language you like, and then write common functionalities in Go as a library. So for native apps, you can see this link, uh, the mobile app package, package documentation. It actually describes how to use the tools and what is the concept and what packages are available. But today's talk is about what, uh, how to use this tool to develop SDK apps. <coughs> so, like uh, Go includes this mobile platform support. support. So in theory, you can write uh, the Go app, uh, the app, mobile app, without using any tools or packages uh, uh, from the mobile sub repo. Basically, what it means is you should have fun with the Seagull, JNI, and Java. It's fun. So first, okay, it's small. Like, uh, it's intentional. You don't need to read uh, this code. Just uh, like I will show the amount of code you need to write. So you have to do all this dance between these languages, JNI programming. That is not very fun. And bad news is, I, yeah, for presentation purpose, I omitted a lot of code. And this is just uh, for a single string argument uh, function. 
So imagine how to handle many parameters and complex types. So it's not fun. And also you have to deal with all the build process to package your Go library into the Android app. And that is not fun. And for iOS, uh, like it is a little bit better because there is no such a thing like a JNI. So you just uh, prepare Go tool chains for cross-compile, export the Go function using CGO, and build an archive using Go build tool, and then link to the app. Yeah, it's doable. Basically, you need to do the language binding, and you need to do build process. It's uh, doable, but manually doing so, that is error prone and tedious. So can you do better? That is the motivation of all the tools and packages that we develop in, uh, 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 available in the mobile sub-repository. I will introduce two, two kinds of tools that you can find from the sub-repo. The first one is Go Bind Tool. The purpose of this tool is to automate language bindings uh, through code generation. There is no special configuration language. You just uh, write a Go program. And Go has a great uh, package, Go types. It will analyze. Uh, so this tool will analyze and find the exported Go APIs. And based on this, it will create a Java API or Objective-C API for you. <coughs> but like, uh, mapping every feature of the Go type system perfectly into Java or Objective-C or some other languages, that is not a goal. Each language has uh, uh, its own idiosyncrasy in its type system, so like, uh, maybe there must be a way, but it's not very clear how to do so. So that is not a goal, but it makes the binding easy. So language binding by GoBind that supports cross-language function call and also object referencing. To, so now you can reference Go object from Java side or Objective-C side, or you can do the vice versa. So how do we do that? Okay, this is my application app's memory space. Now there is Java and there is Go. So these two languages, they have uh, ac active memory management. And when I want to reference Go object from Java, what we do is we have a small reference table and we assign some ID to the Go object referenced by Java and we create a proxy object and we also keep track of the reference count. And this Go object is uh, like a pinned using the, yeah, from this table. So we either prevent uh, this Go object uh, from being garbage collected while Java is holding the reference to it. Yeah, as uh, more reference is made, like the refer reference counter will go up. And when some reference uh, goes away from Java side, it will be destructed, uh, it will be garbage collected, and its finalizer will call and decrement the reference count. And eventually, this uh, object will, the, uh, the pin on this Go object will be removed and the Go object will be garbage collected. We also have the similar mechanism on the Java side so that the Java object can be referenced from Go side. <coughs> and the second tool is Go Mobile bind tool. Go Mobile is uh, the unified tool set, Swiss Army tool set for mobile, pr uh, mobile app development and bind is the sub command to simplify the build process of uh, mobile app library. It generates language binding using the GoBind pro program that I mentioned, I described before, and it compiles generated code and Go code. And it produces a ready-to-use library for Android target, like we create Android archive format. For iOS, uh, it, it builds a static framework. So like, you can import or like, link to this uh, library. And this Go Mobile Bind tool is very easy to use. First, you install the tool like any other Go command, like Go Get, like Go Mobile, then it will install. And then you need to install uh, Android MDK C++ toolchain and 
like uh, set up some cross compilation environment, but all this work will be done automatically by running GoMobile init command once, just once after installation. And in order to build a library that can be included in Android app, so you just run GoMobile bind, target Android and the package, or like for iOS, just to change the target parameter to iOS. Okay, easy, right? So now let's you use this tool to build uh, some Android and iOS app. Basically, yeah, I was uh, thinking about this uh, app for this presentation, and the goal, my goal is basically convert the GoDoc command into mobile app. So what GoDoc does? Do ev does everyone know what GoDoc does? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a uh, like a package documentation tool we've been using for Go, and it has this web server like a UI. So like a it's like a just a golang.org homepage. Why do we need the app? We, we have web browser app, too many apps. Well, sometimes the network is unavailable. Actually, the motivation here, the yeah, motivation of this app is not that dramatic or like a romantic like this. Actually, I was uh, thinking of like uh, when I learned to uh, uh, go, I wanted to study the standard package, source code and package doc. Actually, that is a great way to learn Go, and I had to commute using subway, and there is no network. So how can I use my commute time? So I was thinking about this app. So let's just see what GoDoc does. It reads a package in GoRoot and GoPath, and starts a web server on port, some specified port, and it serves package docs and articles serves static resources such as JavaScript, CSS, image, template, HTML files to make this UI look good. <coughs> okay, so here is my implementation plan. Okay, it will be just a simple web app with a single web view that intercepts all the HTTP requests. And the backend, I will reuse the GoDoc source. Okay, but it's a mobile app, so some tweaks are necessary. Like, uh, like uh, I need to set up GoRoot directory in the device when app starts, if uh, GoRoot doesn't exist. And also, I need to change somehow like a ser to serve intercepted HTTP request without using the network stack. Like for Android app, I could uh, fork a process, separate process, and then I could uh, like, uh, just use uh, like a web server. But for iOS, uh, like uh, forking a separate process and like allocating a port, I don't know. Like, uh, Maybe it looks very difficult. But both the network package, uh, like the net HTTP package is very powerful and flexible. So I decided to bypass all this network stack. All right, so let's see the Java side code. Okay, in the main activity, which includes this uh, web view, it's uh, too small, sorry. <laughs> but so uh, when the, app, uh, the, the uh, activity uh, window is cr created, uh, we will call some, uh, we will set up some backend written in Go. And yeah, the, we need to populate the initial page, right? And we will just uh, like uh, display the package documentation and the content will be fetched from the backend. And we need to set up some web, uh, custom web view client that also intercepts all this HTTP request from the web view and the fetch data from the backend written in Go. So, okay, I have some idea about Go API. And now this is the API I came up with. Okay, initializer function that takes a directory name where we will populate all this Go root uh, content and fetch. And the fetch will return some response object. Go bind will take care of object referencing. So I don't have to worry about returning the O go object to Java side or Objective-C side, and the response is uh, like uh, just a regular HTTP response uh, uh, type. And then with go bind, I could inspect what Java API look like. And all these functions are mapped to a static method of the go doc class, and the error is uh, translated into the exception and response type that will be 
yeah, uh, that is translated into response type class. And here is the response type. All these exported fields, like uh, for these exported fields, we have getter and setters. And the exported method the header, yeah, that will also be mapped to the header method of this uh, response class. Okay, now let's complete the picture. So, Godoc init to initialize the, the backend. And then we will fetch data from the Godoc side using this fetch method. And we can also call the method of the response to retrieve the necessary information. And like, uh, we will modify the web view again using this fetch method. So easy. I didn't have to deal with any JNI or C code. And in mobile app development, uh, like uh, working with uh, like a VI or Emacs or that kind of thing, like uh, that is unusual. People use uh, it with IDE. Virgil Dogan, my coworker, yeah, she put uh, like a step-by-step -step walkthrough guideline uh, on this wiki page. So you can see how to integrate all this in Android Studio or Xcode. For Android Studio, there is a Gradle plugin to invoke a Go Mobile Bind. So when you build the app, it will automatically invoke this command and everything is done. And Xcode, you need to manually run this command and then drag and drop the output to the Xcode environment. This is the screenshot of my Android Studio project. And don't get overwhelmed by all the files on the right side, not left side. <laughs> yeah, they are, most of them are auto-generated. Generated. And I had to write just uh, the build gradle file for like a mobile project. Uh, a mobile. So it uh, the AAR module. And the build uh, that gradle configuration should include Okay, now it should uh, call the Go by the Gradle plugin, and it needs to build uh, this Go package, and where is my Go path, and that's it. And my Java source code is in a separate uh, module, Gradle module, and the, so I wrote basically main activity and Android manifest to use the network in case I need to populate the Go route. Okay, iOS app, I don't have time, but you can try it yourself. And there are some hints, like you can use UI web view, NSURL protocol, and yeah, the instruction is on the wiki. <coughs> I want to share some tips uh, while I acquired, while developing this app, the proof of concept app. Actually reusing good code or reusing the existing code they saved a lot of time and effort. I could uh, like build Android app within a day reusing this Godot. But still, we have to keep in mind that there is some unique property or mobile specific property. And so some algorithm and implementation for server, they may not work for a team on mobile. Mobile apps are resource constrained and users can start, stop, resume apps anytime. So this is all normal, so you have to think about this. The second, the cross-language object referencing is very powerful. Like people know that oh, GoBind makes it easy to call functions, but they often forget it also supports cross-language object referencing. Let's go back to the init method that yeah, set up the Go backend. It took initially the directory and then if there is no go root uh, populated, then it contact, yeah, it actually accesses network and downloads go source and populate this uh, in the, under, the, under the directory. Network is uh, slow, so maybe the user has to wait with a blank page. That is not nice, right? And so like we can modify, uh, you, you, we can you take advantage of go interface. Like uh, here, I define the reporter interface and we can extend uh, this Go bind generated stuff for this Go interface re reporter and then pass it to the init. And as the uh, progress is made, uh, the Go side will call this report and you can do whatever you want. Some nice uh, progress bar with some 
yeah, better UX uh, uh, thing. So it's very powerful, so use it judiciously. And the third tip is uh, like be aware of go by the supported types, and their mappings, and their implication. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's not a go go. It's not a goal to map every like go types into Java or Objective C perfectly. So there is some like a strange thing. Like for example, here goes error type will be translated into Java exception or Objective C's NS error type. They are all errors, right? But they are different. So some information such as underlying error type, they may be lost. So you have to be aware of it. And like uh, in most cases, you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about it. But sometimes you need to know about it. And the fourth tip: Go mobile bind to simplify the library building process. So I could uh, complete this app development within a day, but in some case, you need uh, still the custom tool instead. In the case, Go Mobile uh, can be used as a reference. Like Go Mobile bind dash x dash work, these flags will print the underlying commands and print the name of temporary work directory, and like, it will not delete any of the temporary files uh, when it exists. So you can inspect what's going on and then you can develop your own custom tool. So that is the last tip. Okay, and I want to, this is the last slide, and I want to uh, deliver some news about the mobile sub-repository. And uh, in 2015, third quarter, yeah, we made the major API changes in app and event packages. The goal is, obviously, to improve uh, the API and make it more flexible. And also, like, uh, we are currently working on the general UI packages called the Shiny. So eventually, we envision that like, uh, this Shiny package could work as uh, like, a backend of uh, this app packages. So you develop uh, some UI for like, Windows, Linux, or whatever. And then you can also use many of, yeah, much of that implementation for mobile this idea. And we also made some progress in supporting all Go app development on Windows. And for Go Bind, this uh, like a library building tool, we fixed many bugs and there were some performance improvement and also like the performance improvement work is ongoing effort and we added a more supportive type. And we also included the binding support for multiple packages. So you do not have to like, put all the APIs in one package. You can, like, uh, uh, this Go Mobile bind command will take multiple packages as an info. And because Go 1.6 can support x86 instruction sets for Android, now we have a Go Mobile tool that takes uh, the, the uh, Go Mobile tool uh, to support this x86, x86, 64 instruction sets. So now the syntax is a little bit changed. In the target, you can, optionally, you can, uh, uh, you can specify the instruction set you are targeting to. So yeah, that is the news that I have. So thank you very much. And Thank you, Anna. Questions, please. Yes, we have one here. So if you look at the, uh, the slide you had for the tip number three, you talked about the translation of errors. How does it translate uh, to nulls right now? What? Which one? It says Java null. How would that translate in the code right now? How the what? The uh, Java null. Java NAR. Java NAR is uh, translated into NAR. That is uh, also like a type of uh, like uh, optimization. You, you meant the null. Yeah. Yes. The Java N -U -L -L. null, N-U-L-L. Yeah, it's uh, the, the type of the target, but with NAR, yeah. Oh. Okay. All righty, we have one more question here. Hello. 
Um, so, it, it, if I, since I need to learn the SDKs anyway, mm -hmm. um, it looks like the only advantage that I can see from this is that I can reuse libraries between Android and iOS. Right. Is, are, there, are there other ones that? Uh, other advantage? Yeah, other like other than sorry, yeah. reusing yeah. Uh, the code for iOS and Android? Yeah, uh, that is true, but also, like as I showed in uh, my proof of concept, like uh, I didn't write much code for my app. I also reused the code uh, that was originally developed for like, a server or client. So that is another advantage. And also, you can also take advantage of uh, Go languages, uh, like uh, nice features like uh, Go routines or channels, like inside. <laughs> So, yeah, that is a uh, one advantage I can think of. Thanks. Nice talk. Yeah. And there's uh, there's one question here. Hang on. So, uh, what kind of uh, if if I have to use Go uh, Go in Go mobile, what kind of uh, 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 code do you recommend to use? Like, is it more of a domain modeling uh, thing, or do you recommend uh, you know binding the APIs as <laughs> so the, the recommendation of when you're using Go on Android, do mm -hmm. you recommend binding or do you, re do you, ah. do you want rewriting? So like, uh, like ideally, like uh, the native, like uh, the Go binding or what else? Yeah, so you want to know about Go, either you bind the APIs or you just yeah, start afresh. If I, have a, if I have a big Go project, which I, I have domain model flux only and uh, you know, some other APIs which is called So if you're writing specific Go, Go like Go routines and you have your own structs, mm -hmm. do you recommend using them directly, or should you bind them around when you're working on the on the uh, on the Go mobile? It depends on the situation. I think so too. So yeah. It so depends on the use case that you're looking yeah, at so of how yeah. you want to do that. Yeah. So like uh, when you so see the API, like uh, if it is supported, then like uh, we can use uh, directly for the binding. So, so the Go routines uh, map to threads in Java? No, actually, currently no. Like, uh, and I like it's not yet clear. Like, uh, we need to investigate more. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, is it possible to use the Go bind outside Go Mobile? Like, uh, I want to consume. I mean, to generate a Python or JavaScript wrapper to consume my service uh, implemented in Go. So, outside of uh, mobile, actually, yeah, maybe possible. The same technique. Like we can use, but like uh, currently our focus is uh, mobile support. So, like, uh, interesting. And one last question. Hello. Uh, so when you package uh, like your Go library with uh, to generate an APK in Android, uh, does it package the entire Go runtime with it, and how does that affect APK size? Uh, so yes. So like uh, in this uh, .so file. Like a compiled, like a built by GoTo, yeah, the runtime is included. So when you load this uh, .so file, it will create initialize the runtime. And for this GoDog app, like I found that the .so file is uh, like a 17 meg. Like a, and I don't know, like a, like a com like I included a lot of uh, like a nice gopher images, and so <laughs> compared to this image size, I find it. Okay, reasonably small. Thanks. But we continue actually working on reducing the binary size, so eventually it will help uh, like uh, reducing the, app, the final app size. So your specific question is if the Go runtime is actually bundled in the APK, right? Yeah. And right. Yeah, uh, it is bundled. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, so yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Hannah. Yeah, thank you.